Okay, hi guys, welcome to Jazz Tutorials. In this week's video, it's going to be a little lengthy. Um, I'm trying to cut it back so it's not too long for you guys, so that's why, if you'll notice that my swatches over here in the layers palette, I do have all the layers already made. Because if I did it layer by layer for you guys, it could take upwards of maybe half an hour. But I figured this is an awesome tutorial, and I figured I would share it with you guys anyways, because you guys are awesome people, and that's what I do. So, you'll notice here I have a purple background already made, and you will need to use a color of such um, a hue related to mine. That's the color I've used, but if you want to use a hue lighter or darker than that, go for it. Doesn't matter. Okay. Then, make sure you have white in your swatches as well, so purple and white. And then on your new layer you're going to make above that, you're going to add a cloud layer. So clouds are already in here for me, but you will need to make that layer. So go to ren Filter, Render, and click Clouds, and that's that. And then you're going to change your blend mode to that layer to Multiply and your opacity needs to be dropped down to 50%, and then you will see the outcome as mine, some similar to mine. Okay? All right, moving forward. Let's make another new layer above that layer, and this one's going to be a gradient layer. Um, and you're going to grab your lovely um, elliptical mark, not elliptical, your um, rectangular marquee tool. You're going to make a rectangular selection um, around that size right there, and within that rectangular marquee, you're going to then go over here to your lovely gradient selector, which is right here above your paint bucket tool, and you're going to use black and white, black to white gradient, with linear selected obviously, and then you're going to switch it down, move it, you know, hold your shift key and move the thing down, and you're going to get a black and white, um, a black to white uh, gradient, which will be awesome. And then once you've done that, you can then get rid of your marquee. And you will have something kind of like this, but not. you'll have to switch your layer to overlay and then drop your opacity down to 40%. And then you will see an effect similar to what I have shown here. All right, you guys with me? All right, let's get forward. Now, this is where it gets a little bit difficult and a little bit tricky, so stay with me and listen quite carefully because you may not, you may miss something and that might mess you up a bit. Okay, so for the next effect, we're going to be adding some boxes. Now you're probably thinking, what the hell are boxes and why are we doing this? Well, I will show you. We are making boxes that are going to look like this, with our text on top. How do you make those boxes, you ask? Well, let me just show you, if you give me a moment's time. So make a new layer above all of, above everything you just made, and you're going to grab your um, rectangular marquee tool yet again. You could probably use the shape tool, but it may be a little more of a process because you'll have to rasterize that and all that jazz. But if you do with the rectangular marquee tool, it's a lot easier and less steps to go forwards. Okay, so you want to go ahead and make a square of any size, depending on the size of your canvas. I'm going to just make one this size just to show you guys, but by all means, use your own. Now, you're going to need to select a black color that's not really too black, but also not 100% black either. Because the following effect we're going to apply to the boxes is going to need to be lighter so you can see through it. So I'm choosing um, this color here to see if this will work. It, I don't remember the exact color that I used before. I just clicked a random black color and it worked fine. So you'll have to do trial and error to see if this will work for you. So make your box that particular color. All right, I'm choosing that, but whatever. And now we're going to add a pattern overlay. Now you will not have this pattern, I don't think, in your Photoshop, but if you've been using you know, dot patterns before, go ahead and use your dot pattern you have. If you don't have a dot pattern in your selector, then you can make one, and I'll show you how to do that quickly. So go ahead and make a new canvas with 10 by 10, very small, that's how you do it. And I'm using a transparent background just because it's easier for me. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to make a new layer above that transparent background, and on your new layer, you will then take a paintbrush, a round 3px paintbrush, um, hard sized, and just make a white dot somewhere in your canvas on the top, like right there. Oops, mine's black. Needs to be white. Make it a white dot, otherwise your final effect won't come out. Okay. Once you've made your white dot, go ahead to um, edit and go to define pattern and type in the name of your pattern and boom, you're done. And then you can X out of that and you're good to go for the next step. Alright, so I'm going to double click on this and we're going to add a pattern overlay. And we're going to select the one we just made. So we have dots, white dots, as you'll see right there. 
We're going to now need to make those merge into the box more um, nicely. So I'm going to choose color dodge and hopefully this will work out really well. Okay, it does. It kind of merged. Now you can kind of see the lovely effect we've just made. They're very small dots and they look awesome. Click OK, you're good to go. Um, and then you're going to do a Command T now on that layer. <coughs> oh, wait a minute. Okay, first of all, we need to now merge the effects into the actual box. If you were to do the next step without merging those into the box, you'd be messed up. So here we go. New layer above that or below, it doesn't really matter. Um, click on both layers and merge those two together so that your effects are merged into one layer. Boom! Okay, you're set. Let's move forward. <clears throat> now do a Command T or Control T and you're going to now distort this. I'm going to distort this into a lovely selection. I'm trying to make it so that it kind of goes off to the side a bit. Um, we're going to move it this way. Let's see. Mine's going to look a bit weird, but trust me, it'll look cool. Yes. Hmm. Alright, well anyway, you want to make, um, <clears throat> you want to make it slanted a bit, um, and whatnot. So once you have your slanted to the way you want it, go ahead and dupl duplicate that layer. Then do a control T or command T, and you're going to now flip that horizontally, and you're going to apply it to the opposing side, so that you have two. And they're supposed to connect together like a big box. Essentially, you're making half a box. Um, so yeah, that's what you want to see. And then once you've done that, you're going to then add some text. So grab your type tool, and you can use any font you like. I think an Arial Black would look really nice. Um, with this, just so you know, I'm just using my um, a random text font I have in here, but by all means, use your own font, whatever you think would look, look good. All right, and then type any text you like. Um, I just use jazzed up tutorials. Okay, and then once you've done that, you need to then rasterize your text layer because you're going to then go ahead and distort that onto your canvases, you, your boxes you've just made. So you have to rasterize your type layer and we're going to duplicate that so that we can use the same thing on the opposing side, but you're probably thinking, well how come I can't just do the horizontal flip thing? Because your text will be backwards, that's why. So hide your um, original layer because we don't need that right now. We're just going to do one for now. Um, so do a control T and then you're going to distort this on top of your box so that it merges in and looks really awesome. Do, do, do. And you may need to resize this, um, just FYI. Um. Alright, it should something look, something look like that. So, look something like that, um, or close to it. Okay, once you have that, then you're going to move to your next step, which is going to be to add a color to that. And how do we add color to this? Well, here's what you're going to do. You're going to hide every layer you have except for your background layers. So we're going to hide the box layers. All right. And now what you want to do is you want to define just the gradient the background and the clouds layer as a lovely pattern. So edit and define pattern. All right. Now you could have done this earlier in in the tutorial. I agree, but now is where I found found it would work best. Not sure why, but I thought it would. So then, once you define that in the pattern, then you can bring back all of your cool layers you just made. Oops, that's the wrong text layer. All right. Oh. All right, now double click your text layer and you're now going to add a pattern overlay using that pattern you just made. Now, you will need to adjust this FYI. So, you're going to need to go to your scale. You're going to need to adjust the scale to suit whatever looks good to you. Um and you kind of, you know, it would be cool to have, see that looks really cool cuz you have like the gradient coming into it. So, I kind of that's pretty cool. So, I'm using 61%, but by all means, please play around with your scale and look do what looks good to you. Alright? 
And then you'll do the same thing on the opposing side we just did. Okay? All right. You with me? Okay. So do the same effect we just did on that side, and boom, boom. And then what you'll see is, let me get mine. All right, and there, boom. That's my boxes. That's what I've made. This is where we are right now. Are you still with me? All right, I haven't lost you yet, have I? I hope not. All right, if you feel like you're lost and you've done something wrong, now is a good time to go back and see what you've done wrong because we're going to move forward and do more awesome things. All right. Okay, who's with me? Now, we're going to add a reflection to this. Oh, how do we add a reflection, you ask? Well, this is what I've done. I merged all of my box layers into one. So the right box is merged into one and the left box is merged all into one. The text and all that stuff. So, once you've merged them together, you will then do a control J and copy both of them. And then you will, of course, do a control T and you will flip them horizontally, or vertically rather, and then you will drop the opacity down to 30%. And then you should get a reflection similar to that. Now, before I say anything else, you may need to re-distort your um, copied layers for the reflection. Okay? If you need to do so, you are free to do so. Control C, distort, and distort so that they go together and they don't look ridiculous. All right. And then on the left side, do the same exact thing. And you should have two reflections looking pretty freaking awesome. All right. We're close to being done, but not quite. Now we're going to add our lady or person in your photo. So go and add your person. And boom. Now you'll notice how mine's already got the effects we're going to apply to it. I will explain. You will have a colored photo. When you open your photo, you want to have, you want to decorate that photo to black and white. Decorate is the best bet. All right. Once you've decorated your image, double click it, and you're going to add a color overlay, first of all, a purple color overlay of such. Any purple hue is fine. I've chosen this lovely purple here. Click OK. And you're going to select your blend mode to overlay, obviously, to show the effect. All right, then we're going to add an outer glow. White is your color, and opacity is 10%. Screen is obviously blend mode, that's standard. And then your spread and size, 18 and 62. 18 for your spread, 62 for your size. Click OK, and you should see someone or an effect like that. All right, well, let's keep going. Now we're going to add some things behind the lady. We're going to add some cool brushes and we're going to add some awesome like um, shape layers. So grab your shape tool and you want to select um, on your custom shapes tool any of these such, any of the flower leaf, flowers type ones. If your flowers aren't in your um, shapes yet, go ahead and load those. They come standard with Photoshop so I know they're in there. They're in your preset section, so go ahead and load those, and then you can use them. All right, and then you're going to add them very, you know, anywhere around your lady, anywhere you want. And you're going to also remember to drop the opacity of those layers down to 10%, so they kind of blend in. All right, I added a bunch here. Um, that's what mine looks like right now. Okay, all righty. Now. We're going to add a final touch to this. We are now going to add some brushes to this. Now, I have some watercolor brushes already in Photoshop. I believe we've used these in previous tutorials before, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm pretty sure we have. I will leave um, a link to these brushes in the description box below for you to download because you will need these to make it look awesome and popping. So, make a new layer below the girl layer and also above the um, shape layers, okay? So grab any of these brushes you like, just play around with it and see what looks good to you. You're going to want to select a very, very bright hued color. So I've chosen some, let me go to my layer and show you what I mean. I've chosen um, some green, yellow, blue, and pink. Now, before you go all crazy on me and say what the hell, I will admit to you that these colors are not as vibrant as you think they will be. So make sure you either try I'm um, using a pastel color or a really, really bright, bright color. 
and in the event your colors are not as vibrant as mine you may need to go up here to your image and adjustments and you will need to probably adjust the um, hold on why is that grayed out okay image and adjustments and you may need to adjust the um, where is it exposure if you adjust the exposure and the offset you can then make it brighter or lighter to your advantage that's what I had to do with mine because mine was not really bright and obnoxious like I wanted it to be so you may need to do that if so that's how you do it and once you've done that there's your photo and boom we are done um, you could go ahead and add other brushes to this as well or other um, cool shape layers and whatnot if you wanted to I just didn't want to I felt like it was just too much and it and it looked fine the way it was so yeah that's my photo. That's the tutorial, and that's how awesome awesome can be. <laughs> so I hope you like this, guys. Um, if you liked it, hit my like button. Um, if you really liked it, you can subscribe as well. I love new subscribers, and we're only 200 away, maybe even less, from 10,000. That's a lot of people. That's awesome. I love you guys. Um, and, oh, we, and as you noticed, I've started a weekly beginner's tutorial series. Um, I try to post it every Wednesday slash maybe Tuesday or Thursday. But don't worry, we get another video. So you get two videos a week from me, a beginner's and a regular tutorial on Saturday slash Sunday. <laughs> so, yes. Um, Alright, well, thanks for watching, guys. And please subscribe, comment, like.